Hello, I'm Linda Ann Smith. Welcome to Studio ABC. I'm a video creator for Color Art at ColorArt.com. Today I'll test a brand new product from Color Art called Vivid Ultra Metallics. It's a new paint, has so much shimmer. It's amazing. And I haven't I haven't tested it, I haven't opened the bottles, I've done nothing with it. My colors are from left to right. African Jade, Snapdragon, and last I have True Silver. There are four ounces of product in each of these bottles. So I'll be using a palette knife and a stencil that I found at Hobby Lobby. I've already painted my canvas with a very inexpensive black uh, acrylic paint. In, it's a matte paint. I really prefer to paint my own feathers, but I thought since I found this stencil, it's a huge stencil, and it was uh, on sale, it was originally $9.99, and I found it for $3.59, so I thought we would try that today with the palette knife and see what happens with the Vivid. I can't wait to open these bottles because I've heard so much about this new paint. It would be much easier to use this stencil just like it is, but I want all the feathers to go in one direction. I want them to hang down from the top. So I will be probably doing one feather at a time, which will more than likely be a big test of patience for me, because I'll need to do one feather and let it dry and another feather and let it dry as I go. I'll begin with the color Snapdragon. It's the strongest color in the three colors of the three colors that I'm going to use. And just like any other metallic uh, paint that has mica in it, you need to shake that and so you can bring that uh, mica back up to the top. And I'm going to start by putting this on the outside edge of the stencil and pulling it in with my palette knife. But I know me, I get pretty wild when I get started, so I'm masking off some of this stencil that's next to it uh, with just some ordinary painter's tape and that way I won't get into the next feather because I don't want to do two feathers at one time. I don't want that upside down feather on here. The reason I chose to start with the Snapdragon is because it is the darkest of the three colors that I'm going to be working with today. And I want to see if it really has the metallic, if the metallic can come through on this particular uh, color, then I know it can come through on the lighter colors. I'm moving on to the African Jade, but I can already tell you that uh, this is pretty different paint from any of the other metallics that I've ever used. It is much more metallic, much more shimmer. This shimmer paint must have taken its vitamins. It is strong and rich, and I don't know if you're seeing that on my screen or not. I hope you are, because the shimmer is incredible. I am odd. I knew it was supposed to be good, but I'm really excited. This really is an ultra metallic. It's amazing. I'm going to mix these up, see if they mix up well, see what that looks like. I seem to be a little heavy handed on my uh, palette knife, and as I pull this through, uh, I'm making marks in it. It's almost, it's thick enough that I can make little marks with my palette knife in it. I'm not sure that I like the way that looks, but again, I'm playing. I like to play with a new product and find out what the characteristics of it are. And my first impression of this is very positive. These colors are blending together. I really think they blend together better in real life than what I can show you on the camera because they're blending together and making other colors in between the Snapdragon and the African Jade. I'm not sure if this palette knife is the right tool. Probably something with a wider plane on one side would work better, but let's pull it up and see what happened. And that, where it looks white up there, that's a reflection of my light overhead. This is like a mirror. It's so bright. I'm not particularly uh, excited about the spaces between my feather and the spine and, the, and then the little soft parts of the feather. So I'm going to play with a brush on this now and see how that fares, how that well that works. And it's spreading nicely. I am noticing that I need to work fast. This 
dries faster than any other paint I've ever worked with. But I'm going to start bringing down this spine, connecting it together so it doesn't look so much like a stencil, and bringing these little feathery parts up to the spine with the brush. And that's really pretty easy to do. The paint's flowing nicely with the brush. I like that. And even when I spread this out thin with a brush, the coverage is just pretty amazing. I'm wondering how this is going to work if I do layers. I'm trying to get this where you can see it. The light's bouncing off of it so much, I'm not sure that you can see what I see. More like that, perhaps. See it a little better. Let's try making a line straight out of the bottle with it and see what happens. Well, that that works and it holds up the paints uh, holding its shape I'm not sure that I like that for this particular uh, composition I'll probably end up going through that and putting it down a little bit I don't, I don't want it to be that thick but I wanted to try it out uh, now I know that if I want to make lines with this I could squirt it straight out of the bottle and just like I did for that little quill in the middle but I think instead of letting it dry that way, I'll take my brush and kind of knock it down a little bit so it won't quite be so high there in the center. Let's give it some drying time before I move on. I'm discovering that you probably need to know what you're doing before you work with this paint because it, drives, it dries pretty fast on the surface. I'm going to work now with the African Jade as my beginning color. As I look back at my first feather, I realize that it's everything I want in color, but probably lacking in the technique that I use. Uh, I think I was just so wowed by the paint that I wasn't paying close attention to technique. So now I'm going to add some of the true silver, and I'll go ahead and add some Snapdragon down here and mix all three of them together. Ooh, my goodness. That silver is almost like a mirror. It's like a high polished sterling. My goodness. This is not your grandma's shimmer paint. This is Vivid Ultra Metallics and I'm in love already. I can see so many possibilities. And I'm thinking that these particular colors, wouldn't they be pretty in a peacock feather? Oh, my goodness. Remember, if I'm going to pull this paint around, it dries really fast, so I have to work quickly. I can't uh, get up and go make myself a cup of tea and then come back if I'm going to shift the paint. And I'm pulling it right up to that um, quill. Do you see these little spots where the paint got over onto the black acrylic paint? I am going to be able to take care of that by just going back over it with black acrylic paint again to clean the areas up when I get all finished. I probably should have just painted these freehand because I can't resist the temptation of going in and doing a little painterly quality to this. And uh, I just am spreading that paint around just here and there and without any particular formula. And I'm using my paintbrush to spread out the paint where I got the palette knife too close to the canvas and kind of gouged out areas that didn't look so attractive. And just playing with the blending, it's fun. I don't think you can see how mirrored this is. I'm concerned about getting a good photograph of this whole thing. I've decided that I want one feather to overlap another one to create a bit of tension near the center of the canvas. So I'm covering uh, the dry feather with masking tape, it's actually painter's tape. Uh, right where the stencil, right where the stencil will come across that area. That way, if I paint the stencil without worrying about getting into the paint, I can lift this off later and it won't have painted my other feather. This, sec this third feather will look like it's behind the second feather. I can begin the same procedure for doing my third feather once I get that all masked off. And this tape actually helps to stick it down to the canvas so the uh, stencil doesn't move. So it's not only for masking off the ones on the side, but it helps uh, make it stationary for me to work on. I'm turning my canvas around so I can work from a different direction this time. And I will begin this one with the true silver. This is so bright. 
even when it's wet, it's bright. And then as it begins to dry, just like most shimmer paints, it gets even more shimmer. So I'm trying very hard to keep that palette knife to give a nice even coat, but you see I keep getting little scrapes. So if I want it to be even, I'm going to have to switch over to something like a credit card that's wider. But let's throw in some African Jade into the silver. Ooh, that's pretty. Oops, scraped a little too much off. And that seems to keep happening with this palette knife. I don't have good control of this. I'm definitely going to try a credit card in a few minutes. Stencils are not really my strength, as you can see, but if you're good with stencils, you may be able to use the palette knife just fine with them. I've seen many artists do that. It's just not one of my things. Okay, that's about as smooth as I can get it, and I'm pulling it up to see what I've got. That looks pretty doggone good. I'm getting better as I go. Let's use the palette knife to scrape in some little lines before this paint gets dry. And for the third time, I'm working very quickly again with my brush, and I'm using the Snapdragon, blending it into the uh, True Silver, giving it a spine and attaching the feathers to the spine. But I really like the way this looks when it blends together. Let's use our palette knife to pull the yellow tape off that I used to mask off this feather and see how I did there. So far, so good. Yes, that worked pretty well. More drying time. I'll be going back to that third feather later, but on to the fourth feather, and this time I'm mixing both the African Jade and the Snapdragon at the same time. Here I am with my palette knife still. I haven't gotten that uh, credit card out of my supplies yet. While these colors are still wet, I'll add some of the True Silver to the mixture and spread it out with the palette knife. Same procedure, different feather. Let's look behind the stencil. Oh, every single one of these gets prettier. I am getting better. And it's not taking me very long to learn the properties of this paint. I will say that I learned one thing. Do you see how some of the paint has little black spots on it? Sometimes I happen to get a my finger or a brush or something in paint that had dried on the surface but had not cured all the way through and that will lift the paint off of the canvas. So let's go back and add some shading or some uh, layers. I think that's a better word. It's not really shading. We'll add some more layers to get some more color involved in all of these feathers. Two of my subject matter feathers and dragonflies are going to be just perfect for this paint. Can you imagine dragonflies with this high metallic finish on the bodies? I just think that's going to be awesome. The True Silver mixes so well with the, all of the colors that I'm wondering what would happen if I added some primary element to the True Silver for this last feather. I was inspired to try this because I took a picture of the composition before I, as a work in progress before I finished and the silver feather turned out pink and I was going, whoa, what's that about? It's so highly metallic that it reflected what I was wearing. This is a very revolutionary paint that's gonna hit the market like crazy. The silver especially, I think, will be popular. I'm gonna use Apple Blossom to color my silver paint. Now, I'm thinking it'll probably take quite a bit because it, it it has good coverage when you use just a brush stroke, so I'm thinking it'll take a lot to uh, tint this silver. Okay, so that didn't do much, and I'm going to add a little more and see what happens. And actually, I'm beginning to see a pinkish cast in this that I think will end up pink once it dries. I made sure to mix this very thoroughly. Time for the last feather. Because I mixed this paint in such a small bottle, I'll place a little board over here beside me to use as a palette and I'll dump out some of this paint that I made. And I finally got smart enough to go get my credit card to spread this with. This technique is working much better for me already because it's wider and doesn't gouge down into the 
canvas as much as I was doing with my palette knife. See how smooth that goes on? Need a little more paint and I'm going to keep this in this little tiny container, what's left over, because I'm going to use it to touch up some of the other feathers. Save yourself some grief and start with the credit card. This is so much easier than it was with the palette knife. I'm going to be super good and walk away from this and give it plenty of curing time. In fact, I'm going to let this dry overnight before I add any of the other colors back into this apple blossom color. Isn't that pretty? Wait till you see what it looks like when I pick up the stencil. Twinkling H2O's, I love you, but now you've got a competitor. The Vivid has taken my heart for sure. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? And I use the credit card to pull that line in the center. How easy is that? I kind of suspect that these would be interesting used with the Twinkling H2O's. That'll be another day. I'll make another video when I start experimenting with that. But right now, I'm adding just a little paint to the ones that are dry. See this apple blossom paint? Putting it all over. Again, I can clean up these areas where I've kind of dropped some paint and got outside the lines just by going over it with black acrylic paint. But a little here and a little there to spread those colors all the way out, yet each feather is uniquely different. I probably am going to come back later tonight and the feather that overlaps uh, the middle feather, I think that probably needs to be a darker color, so I'll probably come back with some uh, of the Snapdragon to make that distinct that it's overlapping. Right now I'm kind of playing, as always, I'm always playing. When your results are this successful, it's really hard to let go. I just want to keep playing and playing and adding more color. And this layers well, even though it's fairly, I wouldn't use the term opaque, but it gives good coverage. It's not opaque because you can see through it, and yet it gives good coverage. I forgot to do this little stem up here. Add that. And smooth out one where I bobbled a bit. I really feel like a lot of what you're seeing on camera is the reflective results instead of all the color that I'm seeing in real life. I'm hoping that it will show up better than what I'm seeing when I when I look at it and play these back. But take my word for it, this product was named right. These colors are very vivid. These are completely dry. They're rich and more colorful than what it shows because I'm definitely getting the reflective surface in my camera instead of most of the color. But I think you can get the idea from what you see. I'm really excited about these results. I'm not finished yet because I never did anything to that apple blossom feather. So I want to play with it a bit. I'm going to turn my canvas around and see if I can get some of these colors to show up for you. Okay, let's turn it like this and I can work on the pink feather, the apple blossom feather. You can see I put just a tiny bit in the tip of the, the feather right there, just a tiny bit of the Snapdragon. With my brush, I'm going to apply some more Snapdragon. And if I put a heavy coat on with my brush, it covers well. But I'm going to thin this out into a very thin brush stroke. I'm going to keep working with the paint until I thin it out into a very thin layer. And it reminds me something uh, like the Silks Acrylic Glazes. It's amazing that you can use this in so many ways. If you look at this, you see where I left some of the thicker Snapdragon near the center of the feather, but I feathered, for lack of a better word, I feathered it out to the ends and got a very thin coat over it, which just tinted the little feathery parts. I'm gonna pull this in a little closer for you to see, and I'm using the lid of uh, Big Mama Twinkling H2O just to put a dot of paint on. It doesn't take much. I'm just wanting to 
touch these up with little thin layers now just to blend it together. I can also blend it by adding a tiny, uh, ever so tiny, amount of water to my brush. Okay, let's be very open here. I am on the design team for Color Art. This is true. I like all their products is the reason I'm on their design team. But I know I sound like a commercial. I don't like, I don't mean to come off like a commercial. But this is my first try with these and I'm seriously excited about this. So far, I only have three of their colors and you saw them today, but you also saw how I expanded my colors by using primary elements. The places that appear to be white are actually a very shiny silver. I've already shown you three colors today, but the other colors that you can order are Ginger Peach, Lemongrass, Blue Bayou, and Pink Azalea. I recommend that you buy the four ounce bottles. You can get them smaller but if you compare the prices, uh, the most economical way to get the most paint is by buying the four ounce bottle. I'm going to try photographing these from different angles and in different lights so that you can see how the light affects this and the reflective surfaces and the deep rich colors. I'm gonna to try to capture all of that so that you can see more of what I'm actually seeing when I work on it. I hope you'll give me a thumbs up and comment on this video. Always check the description box below because that's where you'll find all the links to color art and my personal links to my YouTube channel. I'd appreciate it if you share this on your social media. And if you haven't subscribed to both my channel and to color arts channel, why not do that now? Thank you so very much for watching and I hope to see you back soon.